This video is sponsored by Squarespace. We're going to talk about that later, but let's make some add-ons. We are going to use a add-on called Serpens, which is an add-on that lets you make add-ons using nodes. It's a pretty interesting concept. Let me just show you something I made with it. I made an add-on called Render Notifications. When your render is done, you can literally text yourself whatever phone number you have. It will text your carrier with that phone number saying, Render is complete. This is how long it took. And you can also email yourself a notification. I'm going to enable the add-on. I'm going to text an AT&T phone number. And let's say that it is my phone number. And I can add a little note saying, Render working. Yay. So I'm going to hit Render. Wait for that to finish. And without really showing you the specifics it did actually text saying the render is complete with the project name etc so again this is going to be using the serpents add-on so assuming you have that you're going to go to the visual scripting editor i can create a network i'm going to call it add-on add in a panel node and you can see immediately down here it created a new panel if i change the name to awesome add-on you can see it updates over here and then the name of this kind of panel or what it shows as as a tab can also be called new add-on and you can see with a single node we've set up basically our panel and you can do all kinds of things like hiding the header and whatever by the way before we continue just make sure you enable python on tooltips so will make your life easier. And maybe let's also insert socket buttons, which may help or not. For the panel, I first of all want to add a button. What the button does is pretty irrelevant. So you type in button, you connect this to this, and now you can see our awesome add-on has a button. It doesn't do anything, but it does exist. Add cube. So we're going to make the dumbest add-on to begin with. And what we want this to do is when we click it, it should add a cube. You can also add another button. In fact, you can add as many as you want. So I'm going to add a button, put it as the next one. So this one can be called add cylinder. So to actually get this to add a cube in a cylinder, we somehow need to sneak our way into this without knowing how to code. You can go into the scripting workspace which I know most of you haven't touched. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to delete everything and have a fresh scene. And you're going to notice, by the way, that every time I do something like add an icosphere or whatever, this little dialog down here is going to add something. So I'm going to duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. You're going to see it's going to do a whole bunch of things. What this means is that we actually get the code for anything we try to do. So if I try to add a cube, you're going to see, oh, we got BPY, blah, blah, blah. You can click this, control C. And now if I was to make a script, you can type control V. And now this is part of our script. But when you run this, it's going to crash. And that is because BPY is not defined. All you need to know is this thing only makes sense if it knows that we're using Blender Python. So I'm going to import BPY and we're going to get back to nodes in a second. But when I launch the script now, you can see it adds a cube. Awesome. The cool thing about this is whatever script we make, we can integrate into our nodes. So I'm going to call this cube script because it adds a cube. Now back in our kind of node land, what we want is our panel is going to have a bunch of buttons. And then this add cube should run that Python script. You can either do an operator right here from Blender or we can make our own. So I'm going to start with making our own. So we're going to make an operator. You're going to see there's no options here. And that's because you have to make one. This is an operator. It can do whatever we want it to do. I'm just going to call it add cube because that's what we want to do. And then fill in the button right Right here. So in other words, we have a panel, that panel has a button. And when you click that button, it's going to run this operation. What is this operation going to do on execution? Well, it should run our Python script. So you just type in or run script. You connect the execute to this, you say which one, this one, and now we have a uh, working add on. So if I click add cube, you can see our add on now has a button that adds a cube. Let's see, I can take this object and let's say move it on the x axis, but we can copy it and I can create a new script for this if I want it to be its own operation. So I'll call this move again, we're going to import BPY so that when we paste this and knows what it means, we can say then run another script. So it's going to execute, fulfill this node and then keep going down the chain, this one is going to move our cube or really our active object. So I run it. Now we have a cube over here. And then at the very end, I can add another cube. So cube script, it's going to add a cube, it's going to move that cube, and then it's going to add another cube in the origin. So it will look like that. So let's add this uh, cylinder button functionality, you can pull it right from blender. So go to mesh, go to cylinder. And when I hover over it, you're going to see this piece of Python code that says BPY operations, blah, blah, blah. If I right click this, you're going to see something called get serpents operator. And then instead of saying like paste with control V, which doesn't do anything, you have to do shift V for uh, paste. So I'm going to run operator, not only does it add a cylinder, but it gives us all these options, like how many vertices do you want, etc. These are exactly the same parameters that we get here in this uh, dialog. And I guess instead of putting it as a node here, let's just paste the operator directly. If I add cylinder, boom, we have a cylinder. I can also expose the vertices so I can pick a number myself. So let's say this is set to 10, such that when we add a cylinder, now it has 10 vertices. And notice, by the way, that every time we update this, it's going to update how our script works, which actually wasn't the case with an earlier version of Serpents. If you're not getting that update, you just have to hit this compile button over here, which says I added nodes, make sure you uh, include them. Uh, but sometimes, depending on your blunder version, it can create issues where it doesn't recognize operator names and things like that. Use at your own discretion. This is Stu. Stu doesn't know how to make a website, so Stu uses Squarespace. No fancy HTML required. You just drag and drop elements and you can make a beautiful website. And here are three features that Stu loves. The first thing Stu cannot get enough of is analytics. So you know who is going to Stu's website. Second of all, Stu doesn't like storing his files himself. So Stu <laughs> uses the cloud that is offered with Squarespace that lets you store any images, audio, anything that is part of your website. And then thirdly, Stu. Stu is trying to make a buck, okay? <laughs> and because Squarespace offers every payment option under the sun, you can sell any kind of product, you can make your website. And when you're ready to take that website and launch, you can use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's say we wanted to make this a bit more complicated. And instead of just like adding a cylinder with a certain number of vertices, what if I want this to be an option exposed inside of our add on, of course, it's accessible over here. But let's pretend like we don't have that option, then we need a slider to do this, we can actually create our own parameters. So inside the end panel, go to serpents, which has all these things, including a way to export our add on. Don't worry about that. All we care about is our properties. I'm going 
going to add a property. I'm going to call this vertices, although you can call it whatever you want. So maybe let's call it vertex number. And for this parameter, just like geometry nodes, you have to say what kind of information is it? Is it text? Is it a number? Is it a Boolean? This is going to be a integer, which we can expose over here. So if I add in a serpent's property, we're just going to have a general node that says, what property do you want to fucking use? And I'll say, okay, the vertex number. We have a serpent's property. We want to display it. So I'm going to type in display property. Boom. I want to expose a property. So you're going to see no properties connected because we didn't say what property it is. It makes sense. We connect these. And now uh, we have a slider. Now at the moment, the slider doesn't really do anything, right? So if I set this to three and I add cylinder, like it doesn't care about that because all I'm doing is displaying this property. Uh, we want to also then overwrite the number of vertices when we spawn in a cylinder. Not only do we have the properties being the uh, vertex number, but we have the actual value that it takes on. This value should go inside of here. And now we have it set to six. I add cylinder. Now it has six vertices. Another thing is we don't really know what this is. It's just like a mystery number to the user. So it would make sense to add a label. I am going to call it vertex number, or maybe let's just call it resolution. And let's get a bit fancy here. You're going to see that in my add-on, I have all these nice icons, like this custom one, this kind of Wi-Fi symbol that can turn into like an internet symbol. Each of these has a icon. So for add cube, it would make sense to have a uh, cube icon. So you click that choose. These are all the icons that are inside of Blender. You'll see them in different workspaces, whatever. Instead of trying to find the individual one, if you know the name like cube, which obviously it's just going to be called cube, you can say, oh, choose the cube icon, which now the button has a uh, cube. For the cylinder, well, let's see. Yeah, if there's a cylinder icon, then in the menu, then so too should there be one here. And then for our resolution, it can have not only a label, but an icon, maybe this kind of like mesh data one uh, over here. Now you're going to notice, and I guess I didn't know this would be the case, but you're going to notice that when we choose this icon, it doesn't really update. And I guess this is just because of the type of kind of visual interface stuff we're putting here. So we actually need a workaround. I want to show the icon next to the button because I guess it's not working automatically. So well, just like we can display property, so too can we display an icon. And this is going to be the next thing in the panel. So we're going to have button, button, resolution, icon. And right now this is going to be blank until I choose an icon. So I'm just going to choose this mesh data one. I want to show one next to the other. The issue is we basically have an order of operations where if I now switch the order of these, it basically goes like it makes a new row for each one. So you can't really put them side by side. Well, if you look at the interface options, there's so many. You read through them, you're going to see that the one that kind of makes sense is there's going to be something called split, meaning I want something on the left, something on the right, and we're just going to use this, okay? So we're going to only have three rows, the third of which right here is going to have an icon, and then it's going to have a display property. For this third input, I'm going to split, and you can see automatically we get two options, and I'm going to make the first one our display icon, and the second one our display property. So now you can see in the individual row, uh, we have two columns in a sense. You can kind of decide, uh, you know, how much space uh, does each one get. By the way, if you run this through a split, you get the luxury of some other options, like you can do this um, alert, which will make this red. It's just kind of cosmetic. Uh, you can use this as uh, split layout to kind of change the look of it, if that's something you want. In this case, it is something I want. And you can also add thickness to this. So this is where you can start controlling like thickness of things, but we're still missing this kind of design where things are inside of boxes and whatever. You can take any interface property and just put it in a box by putting a box in between. So now this is in a box. Now this is in a box. And if you want two items to be in a box, you take your first thing in the panel, you make it a box, and then that box is going to have two items. So a single box now contains both of these that I can turn red, I can do whatever I want. In fact, I can actually throw everything. So I'm just going to get rid of all this panel, I'm going to throw everything inside of a single box. Last thing I want to talk about, by the way, is what if I want to take everything I did here, and I want to put it somewhere else, like maybe I want to put it on the side here, or maybe in the render tab, but I don't want to make it over again. Well, remember, all of this is a panel that we happen to put in the 3D view, you click this eyedropper, and all of a sudden, you're going to see all this kind of like red sections appearing. I let's say I put it here, you can now see our add on is now in this list. Uh, let's actually pick a more sensical place. So let me just get rid of this panel actually and replace it. So this is just going to disappear. It's going to be nowhere. I'm going to replace the panel with a add to panel. So the difference is instead of having a panel, I'm saying take one and add shit to it. So I'm going to pick one. You're going to see we have all these options. I'm going to add it to kind of these render settings here. And then I just connect everything I did to this box. And you can see uh, this panel right here, which is the render thing now has all our settings. It can come before it could come after you can also do a like a whole different thing. Like you could do a pie menu, for example. So if pie menu is one of these, so this kind of thing, I can create a pie menu here, the CG matter menu, let's say open pie menu, which pie menu this one, so CG matter menu. And then we have to ask ourselves when do I want to open this? And this is where you get into a whole nother thing about launching certain uh, operators in different ways. Uh, there is something called events. So you can say, Oh, when I click something when this event happens, then in that case, you can open the pie menu, probably the most sensical one is we do a on key press, which says when I hit a certain combination on the keyboard, uh, it can launch this kind of like a control shift, what is unused? Do we have control shift M? Yeah, that doesn't do anything. So control shift M is going to run an operator, which one this one, which we can either define as a kind of like a custom thing, right? So we add a operator over here, I'm going to call this like launch, I guess just launch, and then that can show up over here on this key press, it's going to launch this operator, that operator then opens a pie menu, which references this pie menu, which then displays everything, and I can hit control shift M. And I can see this pops up kind of in the middle of nowhere. Another way to do this you can just say open a pie menu such that control shift M opens up our CG matter menu. So just select that over here. And now very simply, boom, we have that. So I hope you learned something if people are interested, and I hope they are because I want to talk about this more. And I guess there's nothing stopping me. So 
I don't know, leave, leave comments for the ego, I suppose. Um, what I wanted to say, what did I want to say? I want to keep talking about this. And additionally, again, part of this is to promote my texting, text my phone when the render is complete add-on. So do check it out. It was made with these kinds of things in mind. Of course, there was more Python involved, but still mangled with the nodes. But uh, yeah, that's it.